Hi Gemini, this is your July mid-month tarot reading. We'll have three separate spreads in this mid-month reading. In the first spread we'll see a new love coming towards you in the second half of July. In the second spread we'll be looking at an existing love in a relationship or marriage. And in the third spread we'll see if anybody comes back from the past for you during this time period. Please like, share and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love this uh, time period. Uh, we have uh, the Queen of Cups clarified by the Moon, we have the Seven of Cups clarified by the Tower, we have the Two of Cups. In the potential outcome we have the King of Cups <laughs> with the Nine of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles and uh, we have the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a Water sign, uh, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, we also have Taurus, but uh, you could be dealing with pretty much any Zodiac sign. Well, Gemini, you know what it looks like? It looks like the Ocean of Emotions. The ocean of love, you know, pretty much all cards, I guess, except for the Ten of Pentacles and the Hierophant are Cops cards. Even the Tower is a Scorpio energy, right? The Scor Scorpio is a water sign. The Moon, all the way to your left, is also a water sign indicator, Pisces, right? And we do have the King and the Queen of Cups in the same reading. Okay, so yes, just... Um, I don't know if you've ever felt this way before, Gemini. I think it's going to be very surprising to you. Perhaps you will discover some new feelings within you. It does feel like something new, something you haven't experienced in the past. Right there, kind of in the middle, uh, we have uh, the Seven of Cups clarified by the Tower. The Seven of Cups is a card of confusion, uncertainty. It's a card of, um, you know, your judgment being clouded a little bit. And I think it's because, again, uh, you'll just feel this way. It's like the outside world will stop existing for you. It's just going to be you and this person, right? The tower clarifying the Seven of Cups, again, could be a Scorpio, you know, but the tower is something that happens unexpectedly. Your world will uh, get turned upside down, all right? The first card I came out is the Queen of Cups. Right? Uh, that could be you, that could be them, doesn't matter to me, because we also have the King of Cups in the potential outcome. The Queen of Cups is clarified by the Moon, Pisces energy. But the Moon is one of the most emotional cards in the deck. It really is. And in my spreads, the Moon usually amplifies cards uh, surrounding it. So we have the Two of Cups, we have the Nine of Cups, all these energies. So yes, it's going to be something you haven't felt in the past. And it will turn your world upside down, Gemini. It really will. With the Tower and the Seven of Cups. Alright? You know how they say we're not ourselves when we're hungry? <laughs> I think the same principle could be applied here. We're not ourselves when we're deeply in love with somebody. So you, even people around you will be like, Hey, who are you and what you did with my Gemini? <laughs> okay? The Tail of Cups right there, um, right next to the King of Cups, is a soulmate card. It's a card of uh, unconditional love. It's a card of when two people see eye to eye and both people feel the same way towards one another. I usually call the King and the Queen of Cups the ultimate love couple. And I think that's what it is. You'll be finishing each other's sentences. You speak the same love language. You feel the same way. Um, you have a lot in common, alright? The Nine of Cups right next to the King of Cups is a card of a wish come true. It's also a card of a personal satisfaction and fulfillment. The Ten of Pentacles. So now here come the two cards that, you, that uh, stand out of this crowd, right? The Ten of Pentacles and the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. The Ten of Pentacles is a card of a commitment to marriage. The thing about the Ten of Pentacles, it's a very practical card. So I'm really glad we do have a practical card. Not only love, not only emotions, but, you know, you need a roof over your head, right? Uh, the Ten of Pentacles is a card of real estate, it's a card of financial abundance. It's a rock-solid commitment to marriage, right? A type of a commitment where people enjoy financial stability and security, right? The Hierophant on the bottom of the deck is a card of a commitment, marriage. It's a very traditional card. Again, it's a very spiritual card. Very deep feelings come with the Hierophant. It's also a card of education. For some of you, it could be important. Perhaps that's how you're meeting this person. But it is a serious card. Okay, yeah, Gemini, prepare yourself for something you haven't experienced ever before. And uh, it's just, this is your ultimate love partner. All right, <laughs> really happy for you. Congratulations.
Gemini, if you are already married or if you're in a relationship, this pair is for you. We have uh, the Nine of Swords, uh, we have the Seven of Pentacles, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune, we have Temperance and the Lovers on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with another Gemini or a Sagittarius or whatever their zodiac sign is. You're waiting for something or they are waiting for something. Both of you could be waiting for the same thing and it's stressing you out a little bit. Well, maybe not even a little. Right? But I think it'll it'll get there. It'll get there. <laughs> Alright? The Nine of Swords, the first card I came out, yes, this is a card of somebody who is stressed out about something. Somebody who is anxious, even a little bit depressed, you know, that kind of stuff. All of this is because of the next card, right? The Seven of Pentacles, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. The Seven of Pentacles is a card of waiting, okay? And uh, the Wheel of Fortune is, I think, what you're waiting for. Either some kind of a trip or relocation or a new beginning, right? That, that's what the Wheel of Fortune could be. Any of the above that I just mentioned. A trip, a new beginning, relocation, or something like that. Right, Temperance, right next to the deck, could be a Sagittarius you're dealing with, but Temperance is a card of patience, right? Temperance is also a card of healing, and uh, perhaps this is a way of the universe to tell you, calm down, calm down, it's going to be alright, it will get there, you'll be okay, okay? Um, the Lovers, on the bottom of the deck, that's you, Gemini, right? That's your major arcana card, unless you're dealing with another Gemini. And it's always a good sign to have your own major arcana card in your own reading. So whatever you're waiting for, whatever you're stressing over, it, Relax, Gemini. It'll be all right. <laughs> all right? Cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, Gemini, in the second half of July. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the most recent X. We have uh, the King of Pentacles, clarified by the Five of Cups. Uh, we have the Four of Swords, the Nine of Pentacles, clarified by the Lovers. In the potential outcome, <laughs> we have the Five of Swords with the Nine of Wands, and we also have the Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with an Earth sign, uh, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Well, as you can see, I made a, an exception. I pulled the uh, potential outcome cards. Uh, you don't usually do it, but it kind of looked like a stalemate because I didn't see anything happening. And I think this person knows, this King of Cup, uh, this King of Pentacles knows that if they were to make a move now to and try to come back, you would definitely reject them, right? That's what those two cards in the potential outcome are all about. Definitely a rejection. And that's, you may still hear from them, but um, yeah, the answer is going to be no. All right. Uh, in this, at this point, this person is just sitting there, full of regret. In case you're, if you were wondering how they feel, they have a lot of regret. Okay. Yep. So the King of Pentacles uh, could be an Earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. They're clarified by the Five of Cups, which is a card of regret. It's a card of thinking about the past, uh, grieving the past. The Four of Swords right next to the King of Pentacles. This is them feeling very pes pessimistic, I guess, about this. This is them not doing much or they're not doing well after what happens. All right? The Six of Cups on the bottom of the deck is a card of somebody from the past. It's also a soulmate card. You, on the other hand, you're doing much better. All right? The Nine of Pentacles clarified by the Lovers, that's you. Right? The Lovers is one of your major arcana cards, Gemini, and the Nine of Pentacles, in this case, it's a card of somebody who is, you know, picked yourself up, dusted yourself off, you're back out there, you're enjoying life, you're in the center of attention, you're glowing up, you're doing this and that, you know, being your usual Gemini self, <laughs> all right, then you're doing good, you're doing good, or, or at least much, much better than this King of Pentacles is doing, all right, maybe you will hear from them at some point in the future. But um, as of right now, um, you could hear from them now, but uh, if, if you do, I, I believe you will des definitely shut them down with those Five of Swords and the Nine of Wands, and I think the King of Pentacles knows that too. Alright, so it's like uh, they're like stewing in this energy. Right, so yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> all I have for you, Gemini, for this reading, for this time period. If this video resonates with you, please like it. Please also share and subscribe. And uh, other than that, Gemini, have an amazing the rest of the month.